right, so for a lady, there are very few important items of wardrobe that are important to us. And we probably from childhood think of that wedding dress we're gonna wear when we eventually grow up. That means that the designers of these dresses are also equally important and they have to have vision for different types of women. Someone in the studio with us is sanctified to do this. Adeolu Oyikonsola is of Sanctified Lagos. Now she is a budding fashion designer. She's the visionary behind this unisex bridal fashion brand. And she's taken a really keen interest in other types of fashion as well. But she discovered that, uh, yeah, bridals was what she wanted to do next. It's great to have you in the studio. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I think you have to be gifted by God to be able to make wedding dresses for women. <laughs> Uh, because of all the bridezillas out there. Right. <laughs> How have you been able to constantly recreate designs over the years? Talk to us about it. Honestly, <laughs> I feel like sometimes I have imposter syndrome in a way. Really? Because sometimes I just have an idea and I put pen to paper and okay. something just comes out and I'm like, did it really just happen? Okay. You know? So I'm just very grateful that over the years, all my clients have been satisfied with what they have. Okay. And now I'm in this next step of my journey where I can now start creating things from my own heart and see if they want that instead okay. of just like what they bring to me. All right, now let's talk about how your tailoring journey began. When did you decide, you know what, this is what I want to do and what happened next? Um, I think for a very long time, I spent so much effort in dreaming. Okay. So at first I, figured out that I could create, you know, clothes, outfits in my mind, you know, daydream a lot okay. and, you know, style them. And then at some point I was like, okay, let me take it a step further, mm -hmm. you know. And so I, I spent a lot of time dreaming from 2010 to around 2017 and then I had to make a decision. Okay. So around 2018, I decided to, you know, go to a local bridal store around my area. Um, it's actually a designer called Erish Fashion. Okay. So she trained me and she taught me all the things I know now. All right. So I'm very, very grateful. So from 2018 to 2020, I was able to train myself. So you, you went through the training, you did the work, and now you're churning out these beautiful pieces. Um, now let's talk fabrics. What are your favorite fabrics to work with? I think any form of satin. Satin? Yes. Okay. Any form of silk, any form of satin, something that shimmers, something that flows. Okay. You know, you can really manipulate it to what you want mm. instead of something stiff. Okay. You know, it can just flow mm. with the direction you want it to go to. Okay. Now, um, the, the African bride is dressed a lot more glamorously, in my opinion, yes. to brides from, from the West. Yeah. And you have to think of different things, different aspects of what they're going to wear throughout the process. So there's the trad, there's the actual white church dress, yeah. and there's for the reception, the reception then the after party. Asherbi, everything. Asherbi, and so it's a lot. Yes. Um, but have you figured out a way to manage all these different aspects of bridal? Yes, especially since some ladies will say, I want only traditional, I don't want yeah. white wedding. Okay. Or some will just say, I'm going to court alone. Mm -hmm. So I think at the end of the day, catering to the client, mm. you know, must be like the main factor over sometimes your creativity. Okay. You know, catering to what their vision is, is what really, really helps okay. me, yeah. All right, so I know you came along with some models <laughs> and we're about to see some of your pieces, um, but we are, we are so excited to see those. We're going to, you know, get to the models in just a bit. Okay. But uh, let's talk about the collection that you decided to bring along with you today. Does it have a, a name? Actually, no. Okay. I actually didn't name it okay. because I just wanted to just bring some of the pieces that I know that I've grown fond of okay. over the years that I didn't send out, mm. I kept for myself or okay. to just see in the mm. shop and all. all right. So yes, I brought some that are made out of Ankara, some made out of satin, as I said, okay, of course, of course. <laughs> lace, um, yeah. tool mm. as well. So yeah. So I, I was actually going to ask, some of these fabrics you've called, some are more accessible than others. Have you ever had challenges trying to bring uh, the fabrics uh, in that you wanted to use? 
Um, no, because I think one thing with me is that because of how long I've been at this, yeah. you just learn to adapt to your surroundings. Okay, what is available and then work with the fabric, work with what is available to you. Of course, by God's grace, when there is you know, room for expansion, mm. then you can now say, oh, I want to go all the way to China and bring some fabrics and work with that. Okay. But for now, to remain profitable and to remain creative and to not be stuck in a rut, yeah. you just have to work with what you have around you. So I, I love the term, you use the term profitable because I was actually going to go there. I was going to go into um, how much profit you're able to make. Well, I, from what I'm seeing right now from these images, I know that you, you have a lot of patronage. Um, now let's talk about some of the images we're seeing there. Is this uh, for a, a little bride? Yes, for a That's little beautiful. bride. What or fabric was birthday. that? That's actually scuba. Oh, okay. Funny thing is, I kept it for a very long time, that particular fabric. Mm. You can't even see the quality anymore. Okay. Like that. So, when you think about the women's clothing, you know it has to be elaborate. But yes. then, what about the men's clothing? Because you also make uh, items for men as well. Yes. Um, I think for men, most men just want comfort. Okay. They really don't like the frills like us okay you know so i think what i focus on with them is how does it fit is does it fit right does it look sharp mm. you know like that's the goal to get it as you know fitted as possible so that's what i go for with men all right well i honestly speaking i i think you also have to have a very dynamic view perspective on fashion to do for both men and women uh, so that means you've done bride and groom sets before yes yes yeah? I think maybe because my first inspiration was a suit. Okay. So I gravitated more towards male clothes from the beginning. So I spent a lot of my effort there. Okay. And so now moving to bridal, it kind of became easier because people already adapted to me being a male designer. Okay. So, yeah. All right then. And now for those of you who are eager to see some of these designs, you do not want to leave your seat right now. We're going to take a quick break and then when we come back, we'll see some pieces from Sanctified Lagos. 